Environment Editor Shirley Sitban has already had a look at the advance copy. Hi, Shirley. I, I know you can't go into the details just yet, but we do know that the IPCC is going to be showing how carbon emissions continue to increase despite these repeated warnings. Is there anything these reports can do really? Do they have any kind of impact? Well, yes, they do, because the way we see things has changed dramatically thanks to uh, uh, these meetings and these reports. Let's look at some of the file footage, the first meetings. It was a completely different era when uh, they talked for the first time, the IPCC, because at the time, even more than today, the skeptics were extremely vocal. Even myself in university, a professor said, well, it's still possible that maybe global warming is not entirely due to man's action, but just that's the way things are. Well, today, thanks to the IPCC, well, we know because so many scientists have come together, so many respected the world's best and really looked at so much work that has been done across the world, it has give, given great weight to this theory. So today, nobody can really deny the fact that there is global warming and that it's due mainly to man and to to its activities. And what has this led to? Well, it led to various meeting summits where pledges have been made. This is COP21, which we're seeing here was the first meeting in 2015. And since then, other pledges have been made. This does not mean that, uh, well, emissions have decreased. Not they've increased, but maybe it would have been worse without these pledges. And let's see some images of something that has increased across the world, renewable energy. Uh, governments have made shifts. They've invested more in renewables. Not enough, say uh, the experts. It needs to be massive if we want to stop emissions, at least to decrease them and to limit global warming. So no new science is actually expected to be revealed in this particular report. Given that, what can we expect? Well, it's a summary of the previous installments of this sixth assessment. This is long work. You know, these assessments are made every eight years. So for the past uh, year, uh, we've been hearing details about the science out there uh, to get a better understanding of how the situation is evolving. This time, again, we've also seen uh, studies from the IPCC about the oceans, about land, how they need to be preserved. We talk about this all the time, but now, they're putting all this together and saying, it's not over. You know, we can do something about this. There are many things that can be done, but governments need to take this and to take action seriously, uh, to give incentives to various companies uh, to, you know, have all these policies invest, government investing uh, in various parts of the world to have more uh, renewables and less emissions. And also all these industries that capture carbon dioxide from the air. This is extremely important. It's basically given hope also to all these young people across the world who have been protesting because there are solutions. And that's basically the plan that is being laid out uh, today uh, by the IPCC. It gives a whole panel of things that can be done. And Although it's alarming, it still gives hope because it's all in our hands. Thanks, Shirley, for that. Shirley Sipon from our science desk on that six other, six other IPCC report that is uh, coming out just about uh, 40 minutes from now. Thank you so much.